the, our second speaker is going to be delivering her second project from, from the Interpreting Poetry from the Advanced Interpretive Reading Manual. Well, you can try saying that three times. Guys. <laughs> the title is uh, Birches by Robert Frost. The objective is to understand the differences between poetry and prose, to recognize how poets use imagery, rhythm, meter, uh, meter cadence, and rhythm to convey the meaning and emotions of poetry, and also to apply vocal techniques that will aid in the effectiveness of the reading. The speech will be six to eight minutes. Let's uh, get a large round of applause for Bonnie Summer. Good evening, Toastmasters, guests, guests. I'm going to be doing a poem, I'm going to be reading a poem called The Bonfire by Robert Frost. And I tried to find an analysis because I wasn't sure. This is basically my analysis of it, is that it's about a, a guy who decides to pile up a bunch of leaves and start a bonfire. It, he's kind of a pyromaniac. <laughs> and uh, I thought, you got a thing. I thought that this would be perfect going into the fall. This is a perfect poem. Let me know what you think. Oh, let's go up the hill and scare ourselves. As reckless as the best of them tonight, by setting fire to all the brush we piled, with pitchy hands to wait for rain or snow. Oh, let's not wait for the rain to make it safe. The pile is ours. We dragged it bow on bow down dark converging paths between the pines. Let's not care what we do with it tonight. Divide it? No. But burn it as one pile the way we piled it. And let's be the talk of people brought to windows by a light thrown from somewhere against their wallpaper. Rouse them all, both the free and not so free was saying what they'd like to do to us for what they'd better wait till we have done. Let's all but bring to life this old volcano, if that is what the mountain ever was, and scare ourselves. Let wild fire loose we will. And scare you too, the children said together. Why wouldn't it scare me to have a fire begin and smudge with ropey smoke and know that still if I repent I may recall it? But in a moment not, a little spurt of burning fatness, and then nothing but the fire itself can put it out, and that by burning out, and before it burns out, it will have roared first and mixed sparks with stars, and sweeping round it with a flaming sword, made the dim trees stand back in wider circle. Done so much, and I know how much more I mean it shall not do if I combined it. Well, if it doesn't, with its draft, bring on a wind to blow in earnest from some quarter, as it once did with me upon an April. The breezes were so spent with winter blowing, they seemed to fail the bluebirds under them, short of the perch their languid flight was toward. And my flame made a pinnacle to heaven as I walked once around it in possession. But the wind out of doors, you know the saying, there came a gust. You used to think the trees made wind by fanning, since you never knew it blow, but that you saw the trees in motion. Something or someone watching made that gust. It put the flame tip down and dab the grass of overwinter with the least tip touch. Your tongue gets salt or sugar in your hand. The place it reached to blacken instantly the black was all there, was by daylight, that the merest curt of cigarette smoke, and a, a flame slender as the hepaticus blood root, and violet so soon to be now. But the black spread like black death on the ground, and I think the, darkened, the sky darkened with a cloud, like winter and evening coming on together. There were enough things to be thought of then, where the field stretches toward the north, and setting sun to pilot brook. I gave it to flames without twice thinking, where it verges upon the road to flames too, though in fear they might find fuel there and withered break. Grass its full length 
old silver goldenrod and alder and grapevine entanglement to leap the dusty deadline. For my own, I took front, there was the side. I knelt and thrust my hands in and held my face away. Fight such fire by rubbing, not by beating. A board is the best weapon if you have it. I had my coat, and oh, I knew, I knew and said out loud, I couldn't buy the smother and heat so close in. But the thought of all the woods and town on fire by me, and all the town turned out to fight for me, that held me. I trusted the brook barrier, but feared the road would fail. And on that side, the fire died without a no noise of crackling wood. Of something more than tender grass and weed that brought me to my feet to hold it back by leaning myself back as if the reins were around my neck and I was at the plow. I won, but I'm sure no one ever spread another color over a tenth the space that I spread coal black over in the time it took me. Neighbors coming home from town couldn't believe that so much black had been there while they had black backs turned that it didn't that it hadn't been there when they had passed an hour or so before <coughs> going the other way, and they had not seen it. They looked about for someone to have done it, but there was no one. I was somewhere wondering where all my weariness had gone and why. I walked so light on air and heavy shoes, in spite of the scorched Fourth of July feeling. Why wouldn't I be scared remembering that? If it scares you, what will it do to us? scare you. But if you shrink from being scared, what would you say if war, to war if it should come? That's what, the, what, that's what for reasons I should like to know, if you can comfort me by any answer. Oh, but war is not for children, it's for men. Now we are digging almost down to China. My dears, my dears, you thought that, we all thought it. So your mistake was ours. Haven't you heard, though, about the ships? where war has found them out at sea, about the towns where war has come through opening clouds at night with droning speed, further overhead than all but stars and angels, and children in the ships and in the towns. Haven't you heard what we have lived to learn? Nothing so new, something we have forgotten. War is for everyone, for children too. I wasn't going to tell you, and I mustn't. The best way is to come up the hill with me and have our fire, and laugh and be afraid. Fellow Toastmasters.